What's up you guys? Tyler Huxford here and for today's video we are going to be making a stop at one of my favorite local fish stores that would be Coral's Coral. So this is one of my favorites for a couple reasons. The first is it's just down the road from where I live but I also like it because it's the place I come for high-end or rare corals. Today I'm coming here on a mission. Uh, first thing I want to find is a piece of euphilia, maybe a nice piece of frog spawn or a hammer. I'm also here for um, some fluconosol. My living room tank's looking pretty good for the most part, but I can see pieces of green. I'm just wondering if I get the green out of there, if that's gonna help with the coral growth at all. That's all I'm here for, euphilia, some fluconosol treatment. But if they happen to have a blue spotted jawfish, I'm going for it. If they happen to have a dwarf lionfish, I'm going for it. And if they happen to have a holy grail torch, We'll take a look at it. So, let's take a look. Good, how are you doing? You guys, history was just made today. So let's get here in the car and talk about this. We, I came in here with a plan, guys. I came in here with a plan, and we encountered God's plan. Check it out. Blue spotted jawfish. This is a fish I've always wanted. Like I am super stoked that I found this fish. Um, this guy's been in here for over a month now. I saw this guy over a month ago and I wanted to bring him home, but I just, I have heard that this is a really hard fish to take care of. They don't do well in super hot temperatures, but this guy's been out here for over a month. He's eaten really well and they've kept him in 75 degrees. We've got a really good chance of this working out. This is a hot car. How am I gonna get this home? How am I gonna tell my wife? So it's officially been one month since we adopted our friend, young William. And I'm pleased to report that he continues to charm us with his exceptional personality. He has become a mighty eater and he continues to look re both really healthy as well as really happy in our tank. But I've learned all kinds of things which I wish I would have known previous. So I'd like to pass along some care tips for anybody who's interested in potentially adopting this fish. Charlie, look. You have a new brother. Look at your new brother. Yes. Let's go ahead and put him in the uh, tank he's going in. Here we go. Get him temperature acclimated. Ooh, see the blue spots on him? Already just like jump out completely. I'm very excited about that. This guy over here is a menace. He has uh, already tried to jump out of this bag. You absolutely need a tank top for your tank. These fish are escape artists. They will jump right out of your tank, especially as they're new to a tank. And if you have any fish that are bothering them as they're digging their tunnels and making their habitats and homes, they are gonna fly all around the tank and they'll eventually just jump out. I've never seen a fish do that. Where they... All right, here we go. Already puffing up his lips when the tang came over by him. Better put the cover back on though. This tang comes by, he puffs up his mouth. Nobody's picking on him though, that's good. Harlequin shrimp came to see what was going on. Good of you to join us, Harley. We've got a decent sand bed, not, maybe not the deepest, but honestly, there'd be so many spots for him to kind of chill out. Oh, starting to dig. So the very first thing that this fish is gonna wanna do when he gets into your tank is he's gonna wanna create his home. Honestly, you gotta stick around for the first few moments that you put this fish in the tank because these fish are just not shy. They will get right to work trying to find their new home in their tank, which means they're gonna start burrowing in the sand, they're gonna start finding objects and things to build their balconies. So you wanna make sure that you have enough sand in your tank for these guys to feel comfortable. They're going to inevitably burrow as deep as they can into your tank. Now I've seen the recommendation out there that you need a sand bed as deep as two to three inches, and that is just not the case. In my tank, I probably have sand an inch deep and maybe at some points in the tank an inch and a half deep, and 
with that level of sand, young William was able to find the sand he needed to burrow pretty deep under the rock. But there is one thing that I want to point out. If this is a fish that you honestly plan on having at any point in your reef hobby career, you really should plan for that by placing your rock in your tank first and then placing your sand around the rock. In other words, don't put your sand in first and just stack your rock on top of the sand. Unfortunately, these fish have a history of burrowing underneath rocks and creating passageways where the rock actually collapses on tops of the fish just from the excessive digging underneath the rock. You can prevent this by ensuring that your rock is actually placed upon the glass bottom of your tank and then just filling it with sand around it. And this turned out to be exceptionally important because young William has already built three entryways into his cavern on three different sides of the rock where he currently resides. And if that rock were just sitting on top of the sand, then I would be having heart attacks every night just wondering if I'm gonna wake up in the morning to a jawfish pancake. Now we know that it's good to keep a rock fixated on the glass first and then surround that rock with sand so that the rock doesn't collapse on top of them. But the other thing that these fish really like to do is they like to build kind of patios around each of their entryways to the tunnels. So what I mean by this is they like to stack things like rocks, shells, and even your prized frags around the doorway to their tunnel. It's like it's honestly like they're building a patio. So That's what I call it. So he cave here in the little front, and he's trying to build walls on either side of him. He actually picked up and grabbed those frags and just put it on the left and right side so that he can't be flanked. And if your prized frags are not securely fastened to the rock near their tunnels and they see it, they're going to pick that frag, they're going to turn it upside down, and they're going to bring it right to their patio. I was a little surprised to find both my OG bounce mushroom as well as my Grandmaster Krakatoazoa frags found upside down right by his balcony. That's what he was using for his doorway and I was like, yeah, you can't do that. So that's a no-no, dude. We're gonna have to put that back. I'm sorry. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and add some food uh, just to see if that gets him going at all. He's firing the sand at the clownfish. As for husbandry, these fish will defend their homes to the death. Maybe not to the death, that's a little aggressive, but they will defend the heck out of their little home. Anything from just puffing up their mouths to maybe look a little bigger, to coming out and snapping just a little bit to get the fish to back away, to actually going into its home, burrowing in the sand, and actually like spitballing it at the intruders. It's really funny to see. Harlequin shrimp is even getting really active right now. He senses there's like a fight going on. Well, maybe that means we're you know, off to a good start. He's already building his little home. Go. The clownfish really don't like him, like spitting up that sand. Oh, he's going faster now. He's he's trying to fire the sand at the clownfish. That is so funny. No, he's like specifically firing it in their direction. So that's absolutely what he's doing. The tank doesn't care. Oh, you see that, dude. Go find your own spot. We need to get these guys in an anemone. So the next thing is diet. So fortunately for us, again, young William is a mighty eater. He eats frozen food, just like he eats flakes, which is extremely cool. I've even seen him go after copepods. And they recommend that you feed these fish two to three times a day. If you do that, your jawfish is gonna be happy. In our case, young William actually started eating within a few hours of building his home. As soon as he had a home to kind of hang out in and hide from all the other fish, he felt comfortable enough to eat, which was extremely cool. So they'll probably eat right away. They won't be shy about it. They eat lots. And that's part of the reason why I honestly recommend these fish and just think if you get one, they're likely to remain very healthy, very happy. Previous to purchasing this fish, I was under the impression, I was told rather, that this was a pretty high maintenance fish 
with a lot of really specific needs. The type of needs that if you really wanted to accommodate for, you'd have to make some major changes to your environment, to your tank, to the water, to the temperature. After successfully hosting this fish for a month in our tank, I wanna clear that up because I think that that information is gravely exaggerated, uh, mainly just because of the natural habitat, the region where this fish comes from. So this fish does come from the Gulf of California and Mexico in waters that are known for being just a lot colder, anywhere from 50 to 60 degrees. The conception out there is that these fish need really cold environments. And I've even seen it where sites and other hobbyists recommend housing these fish in tanks that are kept at like 68 degrees, 67 degrees, you know, basically freezing temperatures for us who keep tropical fish. But I have found this to be incorrect. So I personally keep my tank at 77 degrees, which is pretty standard, I think, across the board. And I also happen to know that the local fish store where this fish was housed for about a month before I purchased it also keeps their tanks right around 77 to 78 degrees. And he did find in that tank, he looked very healthy when I purchased him and he's doing really well in our tank. So I honestly am really glad that we didn't do any temperature changes to our tank because obviously I'm trying to grow corals. I'm keeping a lot of tropical fish in there. I was a little worried that I might have to change the temperature at all just to keep this one fish happy. And I'm pleased to report that is not the case. I've also heard that you can pair these fish off, male and female, and they'll actually breed in tanks as well. That's probably not something that I plan on doing. These fish are a little more expensive, especially in today's market. So I'll probably just keep one and I'm happy with that. However, this is a fish that if you're planning on introducing new gobies or blennies, or maybe you already have gobies or blennies, uh, I would be careful. These fish tend to not get along with any fish that are kind of the same species, same family, unless it's that paired off mate. So probably wouldn't recommend that either. But we have enjoyed Young William. He is our new favorite. He is so fun to watch. And honestly, he's just hours of entertainment wrapped up in a small, tiny little wiener. So that's all for today's video, folks. Hopefully you enjoyed today's content. If you did, go ahead and like and subscribe. And of course, don't forget about the giveaway. We're closing in on 2,000 subscribers. And at 2,000 subscribers, we will be drawing names for anybody who has commented on any of my reefing videos here for the crack, spelled K-R-A-K. That's how you enter into the giveaway. I will be drawing those names to see who will win a free Grandmaster Krakatoa Zoa sent directly to their door. That's it for today's video, folks. Happy reefing out there.